Hello to you all and welcome back to uh, my channel. My name is Nigel and if you're new here, the channel is Nigel's Chief Vlogs, where primarily we do exploring the Niagara region, sea do videos and storm chasing. Well, on today's video, I'm going to be doing uh, my sea do adventures episode number eight, which is going to be a review of the sea do. Uh, this behind me is my sea do It's the 2021 sea do GTX 170 and I've had it now for two months and it's about time I gave it a good review. But in order to give it a good review, I think I need to go somewhere really, really nice to make it justifiable for what it really deserves. So uh, I think what we're going to do is put it in the water and do the review out there. So let's go. When I do that, am I not meant to just reappear somewhere? Look at that. It actually worked. <laughs> So here we are, this is my Sea-Doo. This is the Sea-Doo 2021 the GTX 170. Uh, it comes in four different levels, the GTX. Uh, this is the low-end model. I don't really like saying low-end, because it's not. Uh, but this is what you start off with, uh, the, the, the 170, then you go up to the 230, the 300, and then all the bells and whistles, uh, limited edition. Um, all four of them are on the same platform, just different things put on it and also different colors. So what can I tell you about this one? Well, this is the 170, which is 170 horsepower, of course, inside here, which is extremely fast uh, for the size of the vessel. Uh, if you go up to the 230, then you're looking at high octane fuel, same with the 300, and each level you go up, you get a different color to choose from, and you also have a few more uh, features to add on to it. And once you get to the limited edition, you have all the bells and whistles. I didn't really need all that just yet, so I thought I'll start off with this one. This is my very first jet ski. And uh, the only thing I really added to it um, was the IDF, which we'll talk to you about that in a minute because it did fail. And uh, then I also added the Garmin Fish Finder uh, Extra. So the, the base price for this in 2020 was just over 16,000 Canadian. I think it's 16,1 or 16,4. And then with that added on, it was over 17,000 and let's say five. And then when I added the trailer, taxes, and a couple of other things, ended up with like just under $24,000 full cost uh, for everything. And it's absolutely a beautiful machine. I, 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 it really is. But it did have a few problems. Uh, the very first one, of course, was the IDF failure that I had on the very first ride. Um, on May 14th, I picked it up. May 15th, I went out onto here, Lake, uh, Lake Erie. I did a ride down to the Peace Bridge. I never went under it because it was still my first ride. I was a little nervous. And we met up with a couple of people and was going to try and get to Port Coburn. Uh, so just as I hit the two hour mark on the, uh, on the Sea Doo, this happened. <laughs> What happened there? Yep, 
the IDF failed. I had a major failure on the system. It threw me out of gear. It completely shut down, would not start again. Uh, clunk, 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 clunk sound. I kept coming from the engine. And um, after reading up, there was a few uh, Sea-Doo's out there which have IDF that have had this failure. Not every single one of them, it is a small percentage, uh, but unfortunately mine was one of them. But the good thing is uh, my dealership, which is Energy Power Sports in Oakville, were really, really, really good and really, really quick uh, to address the issue. Uh, I got on the phone with them right away when I was just sat in the lake. There's nothing they could do because I'm sat in the lake. I took it back into them on Monday morning and I picked it up again Tuesday, completely fixed. Uh, the only problem was I, I now left myself um, vulnerable to the machine. I was actually nervous going back out again. Uh, I lost faith in it. I really had. I, I really wanted to go and explore. So I really had to try and push myself to explore more and more over the coming weeks, which is what I did. And after about another month had gone by, I really got my comfort level back. I felt really comfortable with the machine. And ever since then, it's never let me down. It's absolutely a beautiful machine. All right, so what can I tell you uh, about the machine? Well, like I said earlier on at the beginning, it's 170 horsepower underneath here. It's extremely fast. It comes in three uh, different modes. You have your regular mode, then you have your eco mode, and then after that you have your power sport mode. Um, I've only used power sport a couple of times, and it, it really is powerful when you take it into the power mode. And I seem to be drifting. I want to go back over there because a boat just came and the weight just pushed me. All right, are we going back? We're going back. All right, <laughs> I'll just lean forward. So uh, anyway, um, eco mode is great. Um, when you're traveling along, it does get a little tiring on the hands, keep pressing the lever. So if you put it in eco mode, it only goes, it goes to a top speed of 50 kilometers an hour or about 30 miles per hour if you're in the States or anywhere else in the world that uses the old system. Uh, so yeah, you can actually just put your, uh, your finger right down, hold it down and you won't go any faster than 50. And it's, a, it's a nice cruising speed, it really is. Then if you take it out, you really have to slow the machine right down, preferably try and stop and then you can change the mode into take the eco mode off or you can put it into a uh, power mode. And if you put it into a power mode, it does actually come up with a warning telling your passengers to hold on tight. Um, but once you take it out of eco mode, when you actually press the throttle, you really feel it. If you're, not, if, if you're new to jet skis in any way, as you put the, your fingers on the throttle and you pull, uh, pull it down, as soon as you accelerate, you're going up to like 60, 70 kilometers an hour in split seconds, and you feel your hands just literally trying to be pulled off, so you really have to hold on tight, uh, which is really why they suggest you wear neoprene clothing when you're doing high speeds. Uh, a lot of people don't realize the injuries which are caused by falling off water, at high, falling onto water at high speed, uh, the injuries that are caused by uh, the water. If you fall off a jet ski, let's say anything over 60 kilometers an hour, 40 miles per hour, if you're wearing flimsy shorts like I'm doing today because I'm not going fast, um, if you hit water at a certain angle, if that water finds its way into your, your private areas, put it that way, right, your backside, uh, you're going to get hurt by pressure of water going inside your body and it's going to cause serious internal injuries. So that's why you got to wear neoprene shorts and protection when you're out in the water doing high speeds. Uh, also, the, the jet ski is three seats, which are extremely comfortable. I've actually recently managed to sit back here because my wife actually took the jet ski. So I just moved back over here, the middle seat, which is uh, pretty good if you've got someone small or someone who loves you a lot can really get close to you. And this is the preferred seat uh, back here. And if you sat behind someone, there is a nice hold on strap here, uh, which is really, really cool. And also I tend to hold on back here sometimes, depending on my comfort level and who's riding, who's driving, I should say. Uh, but overall, these seats are extremely comfortable. Um, the back one, you can lean back just like that and it feels really, really good. Uh, this one, I've only had three people on it once and that was the two kids were on one once. Uh, but for me, I like this. It's, uh, it's very comfortable. It's comfortable on my legs. Um, it's, apart from you hit a wave really hard, you can feel it down below. You, so sometimes you have to ride it and try and stand a little bit if you feel like you're going to hit a wave or fall awkwardly. But it's great. Okay, inside the ski, there's actually tons of storage. Uh, first of all, there's this compartment here, uh, which keeps your cell phone in. Um, you open it up. You've got a little foamy thing here to put your cell phone in. This is my old cell phone which I usually just keep as well, because I have that plugged into my music. And uh, in here, I put my other one. So you can easily put two phones in here quite easily. I do not have the USB connector added, because you know what? I'm, if I'm on the water for 10 hours, my, this day and age, my phone doesn't die that quickly. So as long as I leave the house with a fully charged battery on my phone, it's going to last me 24 hours easily, even playing music. So uh, yeah, that's super tight. Keep it in there. Keep a few other things in there as well. And then you have these here. 
to open this up massive storage bin which is fantastic so you got your safety kit your fire extinguisher in here i have my dry bag i have my uh, fenders which we'll talk about very shortly i have an oar i have a tow rope i also have an anchor and also a sandbag dry bag and also have my sunglasses for my sea -Doo ones uh, my vessel uh, permit and boat license and fishing license is all in there tucked away nice and safely and most importantly sunscreen so you gotta have sunscreen when you're out in the water the fuel tank is here as well uh, which is easy to fill it's a 70 litre tank on this particular model uh, so uh, which is really really good 70 litres uh, I get a full day out of it if not more when you're at the low level warning light it's, it's about 25 litres of fuel you'll have left so keep that in mind and when I filled it up it only took me 50 litres to fill it up so he was right once you hit that low level light of low fuel you got 25 litres so you don't have to panic desperately all right at the back of the ski you've got some great features uh here uh, first of all there's this which is the uh, the ladder for boarding if you want to jump off because this is a great diving platform because uh, this seat comes up which i'll show you in a minute but uh yeah you can this is how you'll get up you'll just kneel on it and then pull yourself up or if you're in different water you can actually put your foot right up and just grab over the handlebars of the seat and just pull yourself up it's quite easy uh, also here is the link q system you just pull these up and then your, your fuel caddy or your cooler or whatever you have will just attach into this and lock firmly in place. And here is a, you open that up and that's where your ski pole uh, pylon will go if anyone wants to go wakeboarding or skiing or you want to do something like that. And at the back you can just tie here with if someone wants to go tubing. So there's loads of great options. These seats come off really, really easily. So just push the buttons in Oops. simultaneously and the seat comes right off just like that. So this is actually a cool little platform. I've done this already once before where I've had a nice day out. I've actually just sat on this, leaned up against this, had the music playing through my Bluetooth uh, portable speaker, and I just laid on here and just used it as a sun, sun lounger. It's been absolutely great for it. Uh, it's great, love it. Uh, this also then comes off and gives you access to the engine inside. Uh, but we won't do that today because I'm out in the middle of nowhere. So I'll just put this back on, it just slips right back on. There you go. There you go, back on. Just like that. All right, snapping fenders. Love them or hate them. I have a love-hate relationship with these things. Um, they're a kit. Uh, you buy these, they come as a pair of two. Then you buy the actual attachment, which is pairs. So I had to buy two pairs. So I have, I have a set on this side, on the uh, port side, and a set on the uh, starboard side. And basically what happens is uh, you, you put, the, atta you put the, uh, the, the, the thing on, connect it, and these just snap on. You see that the little thing here? That just clips in and goes over like that. These things just clip in like this, like that. And on a calm day, <laughs> on a normal day, calm day, they're absolutely fantastic. Now on a, on a choppy day where we got a bit of a wind and a bit of a, a or a wake or a bit of a, some waves coming in, these actually just pop right off. Uh, but the good thing is they, they, they do float and you can actually uh, just come and retrieve them. And they're easy, and being bright orange, they're really easy to locate in the uh, in the water, which is really really cool. Uh, so this will stop your uh, craft from getting unnecessary uh, bumps and scratches all along it at the dock. But you've got to be careful not to do that when it's really really rough. Uh, I am working on a little pro a little thing where I've actually managed to find a couple of buoys in the water, which I've retrieved. People just lost them, so I'm going to try and hook them up and hook them here and probably attach it to here because I do have a few scuff marks here from the dock where I've got where one of these has fallen off and the front of my vessel has kind of just hit the dock where I am at Crystal Beach and I got a few uh, nasty little marks in there. So why the GTX? Um, well it suits my lifestyle uh, what I want it for and what, I, what I've been using it for and it's been absolutely perfect really tailored for my lifestyle I like to do some adventure I like to go exploring things I like to know I'm going to be comfy I like to know I've got a big gas tank on here to make sure I've got lots of fuel to enjoy the day uh, secondly well most of all the comfort I should say uh, the fuel economy is fantastic on this um, for a jet ski I find it I find it great anyway and um, yeah, that's really it. That's why I chose the GTX. It just suits my lifestyle. There's days where I just want to lounge around where I, where I live here in the Crystal Beach Ridgeway area and just come out and spend the day lounging around. And on the next day, if I've got plans, I'll go for a long four or five hour ride, no problem at all. And it, it's, it suits all conditions. I've been out in this ski now 
uh, in the two months, I really, really pushed myself to get used to the ski and handle different situations. So like I said, when I first got the ski uh, back in May, we had the idea of failure, lost a lot of faith in the machine and slowly started working my way back into it again. I actually went out in some like choppy weather here. There's a couple of other guys out on jet skis. So I thought it's safe, they're out there. So I'll go out as well. They're on a tricks, whatever, a spark. So I was doing the same thing, just bumming around. And I was really trying the waves out, learning how to uh, negotiate big waves, to go at angles, go directly or flow wherever. And, and, and that's what it's all about being on a sea do or a jet ski in general is just, just learning your comfort zone and learning how to work the machine as best you can. And being out in all different types of conditions, uh, as long as it's not too severe, you, you start to know your limits, you start to know your machine and how it handles. And the, the biggest test I had was just last week uh, when we did the Lower Niagara River, and it really was a test. And I do not believe for one moment, if I had not been riding in the storms out here and doing stuff like that, I would not have been ready for Niagara River, and I probably would have fallen in, and it could have been a catastrophe. Uh, but thankfully, uh, I have got some experience behind this now. I managed to cram in, like I said, 45 hours in eight weeks, and it's starting to show. Um, I have a lot of faith in this machine. And uh, I'm, I'm overall, I'm very happy. Now, there's one thing I did see on someone else's review, which I have to point out as well. When, you, when you're going through waves at certain speed, this plastic can be a little flimsy. This bit's fine, the fiberglass, but it's this bit. And I just wish they had put in maybe a rubber seal under some of these connectors. Because uh, when you hit a wave, you really hear the... That it, it's cheap plastic sound, and it, it does sound really, really crappy. Uh, special pier. So maybe in the future models, uh, Bombardier can look at maybe lining underneath some kind of seal, some rubber seal to just protect that impact so you don't get that tinny sound. But otherwise, it's fantastic. It's one of the best things, if not the best thing, I've ever bought since buying a house. And it's a lot less work than a house. I like it. I think I should give it a name. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give it a name. I don't know what to call it yet, but we will give her, I'm gonna, it's a her by the way, it's a her, it's not a he, or a, a they, or whatever, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a her. All vessels are female in my mind, so uh, I'm gonna give her a name. All right, so there you have it, that is my review of my sea GTX 170 2021, and I hope you've enjoyed it. If you're into jet skis and sea doos and hope, hope you find this interesting, just like all the other videos. If you're considering getting a jet ski and you, or a sea do and want to ask me a question, please feel free to leave a, a question in the comments below. I, I will get back to you, I promise. I'll get back to everyone who leaves me a comment, good or bad. And I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope, I hope you've learned something. Um, several years ago, I wanted a boat. Then two years ago, after watching jet ski videos, I decided this is what I was getting. Oh, by the way, uh, the difference between a jet ski and a sea do it's all to do with branding. Uh, jet ski is synonymous with uh, Yamaha. Yamaha, it's their trade name for their skis, a jet ski. But everyone just calls them jet skis. So I, I got to keep trying to refer to this as my ski. Because uh, it's a sea do sea do is Bombardier's brand. Jet ski is Yamaha's brand. So, uh, but we keep getting them mixed up. So I'm just going to keep referring to this as my ski. This is my ski. Overall, they're just personal watercraft. All right, I've fed up a rabbiting on now. I'm going to go and... Um, pack up because there's a bit more of a ripple when i get out of here uh thanks for watching please make sure you like subscribe by liking it really helps the algorithms and for people to find this channel um look forward to do more adventures very very soon thank you very much i really look forward to this channel growing even more so anyway until the next video stay safe out there on the water or if you're just driving around and exploring other places stay safe and enjoy see you all very soon Has my coffee gone cold? I think it has. It's gone cold. Oh, that is nasty.